Hello everybody, welcome to journal with me number 48. In this video I'm going to be journaling my junk journal, my onion skin journal and I'm going to start off the video here with just a little haul of some delicious Tim Holtz Halloween goodies from Art From The Heart. If you don't want to see that, you're not interested in that kind of thing, that's totally fine. The journaling starts at 3 minutes 20 I think if you want to skip to that but I do use a lot of this stuff in the journaling so I thought it might be fun to share it with you at the beginning. Just there I was sharing, I got some ink fountain pen ink from them as well but I'll share that in a different journal with me video and yeah as I said this is all the ideology Halloween releases I, I have to get the Tim Holtz Halloween releases it's my favorite craft release of the year vintage plus gothic plus spooky and creepy is just mm, yes so my thing so I was showing you there there's these tiny tiny little ticket packet but they're so small and there's like hundreds of them so I didn't show you those well, I didn't get them out of the packet. I showed you the picture on the back of the packet. Here is the standard ephemera pack full of gorgeous, lovely, gothic-y, creepy, vintage things. I just, oh, I love Ideology Halloween release so, so much. It makes me so happy. It was all on pre-order from Art From The Heart. I think I get most of my Ideology stuff from that shop. I'll link them because they're great. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. And then as well as like the haul, I thought I'd share with you like how I'm storing all these little bits and pieces. And I have this gorgeous vintage Cuban cigar box, which my mum found in amongst a load of rubbish. And we tried to sell it on eBay and it didn't sell. So she was like, just keep it for yourself, like to store your built craft bits and pieces. And I was like, yes, 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 I will. Oh, those little ticket bits I told you about just going in that little plastic tub there. I'm putting all my Halloween ephemera, so from previous years as well, in that gorgeous cigar box. I feel like Tim himself would really approve of that cigar box. I might put it on Instagram actually like a shameless cry for attention from Tim. He has liked and commented on two of my posts in the past you know that basically makes me famous. Anyway there was the sticker book as well which has the Halloween clipping stickers plus some like old pictures and I can't remember what was on the last page. You saw it. And then we have the Halloween worn wallpaper scraps love the worn wallpaper so much so you get obviously the sort of oh it's not a5 but it's slightly uh, slimmer and taller than a5 pieces and then all the little like florally bits and stuff and i already have a little a5 wallet with my other halloween wallpaper pieces so they are going in there and then there's the transparencies i think they're called like acetate pieces i bought two of these packs because those bat wings mwah, chef's kiss yes need them and also the bigger ones especially like the skull x-ray I, I needed two of those in my life so yes as I said I've got two of those packs I'm putting the bigger pieces and the bat wings in my little cigar box with all my Halloween stuff and then the slightly more pretty butterfly acetate pieces they're gonna go in with my other wings what are they called are they just called wings the Tim Holtz ideology wing things transparent wings whatever those are going in the little box with my other acetate butterfly pieces. I just love having lots of cute little boxes and things to store my craft supplies. It makes me use them more if I have those cute little boxes, especially ones like the cigar box and I have like this cute little mini suitcase for my vintage stamps. It's just something about like opening them and going through them and having them. It's just like, I use things more if they're in cute boxes, that's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So here we are, I'm going to start in my junk journal and do just play around with my, my new lovely Halloween bits and pieces. So this page I have, I'm going to have a mix of the background using some of the backing from the products. It always has this lovely distressed spider webby thing which I always use, always keep all the packaging. So I'm going to have that and then a piece of the warm wallpaper. I'm not sure the warm wallpaper I used throughout this video, I don't know if it's this year's or last year's because as you saw I put them all in together and I can't remember what but what design belongs to what year. Also some washi tape up the side there to fill in that awkward gap. A lot of the washi tape I use in this video, especially like the um, the more spooky skulls and webs and stuff are from Gretel Creates. Oh, and I forgot at the beginning of the haul I had some of the fabric washi, not washi, but fabric tape from uh, Ideology as well. That was the situation. I'm sure you're all familiar with it of I need to put one small extra thing in my basket in order to qualify for free shipping. So that's why that fabric tape got bought as well. Also, I don't have it, so, you know. 
Anyway, so I decided to do a little collage using ephemera pieces on the spider webby page. Oh, I'm around the edges, I'm using Distress Oxide in Ground Espresso. Really nice, dark, dark brown adds to like the really distressed old theme of this page. Really, really like the way this one comes together, actually. Had no plan whatsoever going in just sort of went for it to see what happened. Again, as with the wallpaper, I don't know whether the ephemera pieces are from this year or the year before or the year before, they all just get lumped in together. I wanted to add some of the Halloween clipping stickers to this one and I found one that says, I think it says Dorothy liked anything spooky and I thought what I would do with that is stick it on as is, put some Distress Oxide around the edge of course to make it look all distressed and then cross out the Dorothy and then write my name. So it says Grace liked any, anything spooky, but also sort of do it in a way that you could see the original name underneath. Like, so the crossed out original word was there. I just thought that would look nicer than just sticking my name over the top of it. I don't know if I'm making any sense there, but yeah. What I do, I'm using some teeny tiny little uh, alpha stickers from Freckle. Born Webster's Pages, Jelly Bean Soup, that's where they're from. When I'm using the really, really teeny tiny alphas like that, what I will do is I will choose a base for them, add some very slim double-sided tape, and then stick the alphas down on that, because I just find they, they're really unreliable for sticking. They really tend to fall off, so putting them down on some double-sided tape like that, they will stay in place. Then just snip around it, and I've got my word just like that and as I said there I'm doing that thing where I'm kind of doing it in a way that you can see the word Dorothy underneath crossed out just took a pen did some scribbles on it I don't know I just think it looks better as I said than just whapping my name on the top of it a little bit more messy a bit more fun whatever covering up the the what do you call those little holes that they use to like hang them on displays whatever that's called covering that up with some washi and some more clipping stickers and then I wanted to add some journaling straight on to the worn wallpaper. I'm checking my ink journal here to choose an ink that I thought would work really nicely and I settled on Diamine Graphite. So I took that out and my feather dip pen and wrote out my journaling. Now on the worn wallpaper the pen it struggled a little bit obviously because it's so textured. So you were getting like points where there's, you get a big blob of ink where you first dip the ink dip the ink, dip the pen into the ink, and then like parts where you can barely read the word, but I actually really like the effect of that, especially on this vintagey, creepy, spooky page. I think it looks really, just, it really, really works. You can tell it's been written with a quill kind of thing, so it works with the antique vibe. Anyway, I just really like the way that turned out, and I think that's pretty much it for that page. I don't think I add anything else, but yeah, I really, really really like the way that turned out. On the reverse side, as you can see, I've already got something kind of spooky going on. It's from a die cuts with a view paper pad. I don't remember the name of it, but they have some awesome Halloween paper pads and they could be really hard to get a hold of over here. So if anyone knows like this year's Halloween die cuts with a view paper pads in the UK, that would be very, very helpful because I love them. Anyway, going back through my new goodies, uh, the wallpaper scraps and the ephemera and everything, finding bits and pieces to use, I'm putting my ground espresso away and bringing up colour iced spruce. I thought that would go nicely with that sort of off purplish background. And I'm also going to bring in that opposite, just plain white page into the whole spread as well, just layering up those wallpaper pieces. And to bring in that white page into the spread, I'm gonna take another scrap of some of the wallpaper that I've already used, and then a scrap of the packaging again, and layer those up. I'm just gonna distress the edge of that a little bit and tear it so you know it looks more messy. Go around the edges with the ice spruce on both of them, and then layer those up. And then I think I also take, just add the color of the ice spruce around the edge of the white page as well, just so everything really fits and ties in well together and you're very much making a whole spread rather than two very separate pages. And then every so often I'm going to refold that fold, take my bone folder and really score down that fold. Just as I add more and more things to it, it gets harder and harder to fold. So I'm just making sure it will. Yeah. Pulling out this really, oh I love those flowers, those like faded wallpaper flowers. Mm, gorgeous. <laughs> I'm going to add those again across the two pages, tie them in together 
Um, I've said this before, but to help prevent bulk, instead of just gluing them across the page, I will cut it down the middle and then just work out exactly where they need to go. And it just, you can barely tell that they've been cut. They're still very much going across the pages, but it really, really helps with the eventual bulk of your journal. Here I'm adding some of my own stickers. This is from my Victorian portraits collection. Again, I'm going around the edges with the oxide there because I kept this sheet because it was slightly miscut. So there you go. So I'm going to add a couple of those. I think they really go with the whole vibe and they will go even more when I start adding the writing in a minute. Going to add a few more ephemera pieces first though. So the journaling I'm going to add across both pages. I wanted something kind of dark and spooky but also kind of in keeping with the vintage and antique theme as well and I was thinking maybe like some Edgar Allan Poe or something and then I thought nope turn of the screw because I read it fairly recently because um you guys might know The Haunting of Bly Manor that was on Netflix it was very 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 loosely based on The Turn of the Screw and I loved that series it got a lot of flack that series because apparently it wasn't as good as The Haunting of Hill House anyway I'm rambling I read it I liked it and I thought it would go really well because it's kind of creepy and spooky but has that Victorian sort of edge to it that matches all the ephemera and stuff I've put down so that's what I'm going to write on there I'm not usually I don't usually like scary things I hate ho horror movies I can't cope with but things like The Haunting of Bly Manor when they've got a really really good story behind them and it's not all about jump scares I really enjoy them and then I'm just going to finish off with some purple splatters these are Heidi Schwab Heidi Schwab Heidi Swap Colour Shine in the colour Amethyst. I think they look really, really nice. The splatters really add something to these pages. Can't really explain why, they just do. Again, I'm going to score that fold to make sure it's just going to stay down and not keep popping open and stuff. And that's those pages done. Again, really, really like those ones. These pages were... When it comes to the end, when I've finished doing them, it sounds like something like super deep and meaningful that was really thought out in advance and it wasn't in the slightest, it just sort of fell into place. Obviously I've got that skeleton on one side, so kind of obvious to use the Halloweeny spooky stuff with him, but or her. Anyway, the opposite page, as you can see, had those really pretty blue florals, but they weren't very Halloweeny, but I didn't want to cover them, cover them up because they're really, really pretty. So my initial idea was to phage them a little bit with some Distress Oxide Pumice Stone, like lightly go over that with that colour, and it did really fade it and work a little bit, but then I thought that wasn't enough, so I had this really pretty patterned vellum. I thought if I lay that over the top, that tones it down and maybe works as well. I put some spooky washi at the top and bottom, and then I had to add um, some double-sided tape to the washi, because washi doesn't really like sticking down on a surface that you've put Distress Oxide on. Um, and then... I took some more worn wallpaper and I ripped it and I really, really distressed the edges, like tore at them. And I thought, that looks really nice. I'm going to carry that over to the next page and do the same thing, like really pull at the edges. So it really looks like someone's like taken a piece of wallpaper and just ripped downwards. And it was here the idea kind of started unfolding where it was like, I can kind of do this like make a whole page include the pretty blue florals and kind of have it as like a two sides of my personality kind of thing because I love beautiful florals and beautiful meadows and wild flowers and gorgeous botanicals but I also love skulls and spooky creepy things so kind of more turn into an art journal piece about me as it were so yeah that's that's kind of how it unfolded I'm gonna do a little collage at the bottom right of the skeleton page just layering up some bits and pieces again ideology Tim Holtz stuff I'm not sponsored or like whatever for, by ideology by the way I have no affiliation whatsoever I wish I did that would be the best thing in the world ever but no, I don't. I just love it. Um, I did want to include some of my own products as well, though, because if it's about me, I feel like I should do some of my own products. So I pulled out some of my Gothic Halloween ephemera, and I'm going to do, I'm going to add the death, uh, Death's Head moth and some bats on one side, and then add the skull and have him sort of creepily sticking out, a little sneaky sticking out on the floral side. 
as well. And going around everything again with that oxide in pumice stone so it all matches up. It adds a lovely distressed effect without being too in your face. It's one of my favourite colours of distress oxide. It's not one of the obvious ones, but yeah, so, so useful to have. Then I pulled out some stickers. I have had these forever. They were from Paper Chase a bajillion years ago. The collection was called like Gothic Garden or something and it had lovely florals and skulls. So perfect collection for me. So on this side, I'm gonna add some of these lovely flower stickers behind the skull, just have them poking out from behind him as well. There was also some little padlocks as well. And as I'd used so much of the sticker sheet already, it was kind of like, you know when there's only a couple left, you're like, I need to just use the whole sheet. So there was one padlock that had a chain and it worked perfectly as a little necklace on the skeleton. So that looks kind of cool. I quite liked that. And then I'm going to finish off the florally page, bringing out some stickers from one of the Mamby sticker books, the botanical one. I think just a quote about being yourself or something. We'll see it any second now and a little backing sticker as well. What is that sticker that I put down? Was it be, oh, be true to you, be true to yourself, something along those lines. Layered it up with that little marble sticker there. And I think that's gonna be it for those pages. I didn't wanna overdo the florally page because it was so busy already. And yeah, that's it really for those pages. So as I said, kind of more art journaly, but yeah, I kind of like it. They tell a story, even if, no one understands the story except for me. That's fine. It's my journal. Doing a little fixing there of something that had started coming up from a previous page that I'd done. And just showing you that page again there. And that's going to be it for my junk journal. So moving on to my onion skin journal. I'm just going to do a quick page in here before I finish this video. This page doesn't have a theme or anything like that. It is simply one of those, add the pretty things, add the journaling, which is probably completely unrelated to the decoration. And there we go, job done. So adding some of that new fabric tape that I got from Tim Holtz. To keep those uh, closed, by the way, so they don't unravel, I use a little bit of double-sided tape. Washi tape doesn't work so well. It tends to come off and then they kind of unravel in your drawer or wherever you keep them. So yeah, keep them closed with a little bit of double-sided tape. And I also pulled out, this was, it, I don't know if it was my previous journal or the journal before that, but it got very, very bulky and I had to take out a signature. So I have all those spare bits in a little pot and this was one of the pages from that. So I'm using it as paper and ripping pieces up uh, to use as my actual journaling spots because as you can see, Onion Skin Journal, you can very much see the writing I've done on the previous page coming through. And I do like that effect, but you do have to sort of work around it on the next page sort of thing. So that's why I'm adding pieces of paper to journal on rather than journaling directly on the paper. Adding another bit of fabric tape, this is an older one. I wanted it to look more um, roughed up. <laughs> What's a better word for that? You know, just a bit more distressed and ripped and stuff. And um, it's actually quite hard to do it with that fabric tape because of the adhesive on the back. Pure fabric without any stickiness is easy to do. But if you just cut a little snip and then pull really, really hard, you can distress it a little bit. And then here I'm adding these sort of ephemery florally pieces. These are, I bought them uh, about a year ago, maybe slightly more than that from eBay kind of old fashioned crafting product that you don't see as much anymore. Um, I would would link, would link them for you, but the seller doesn't have the, ha, doesn't seem to have the same ones anymore. They're, they're kind of done as die cut reliefs or lithograph or something like that. They come in one sheet and you have to sort of detach them all from each other. And I don't know, they're much thinner. They're kind of more decoupagey. Anyway, some of you might recognize them. I've got lovely florals, lovely butterflies, and I thought I would add those to these pages. So adding the florals and the butterflies to the page. Um, you may have noticed me using that piece of paper or paper pad when I'm gluing things. I just find it so much easier. Instead of like carefully trying to glue around something, you know, doing the edges and whatever, I just stick it down on the piece of paper and then glue all over and then slap it down on the page. It's just, as I said, it is so much easier. Here I am adding my journaling. Sorry about my head keeps keeps getting in the way. Um, I have a new prescription for glasses because my previous ones were giving me headaches and I can't 
wear my old ones until my new ones arrive. So when it comes to being close up to words, I have to get my face like right in there to be able to see what I am doing. So with that, I have finished and it is the end of this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you have any questions, anything like that. Um, links in the description box, please leave me a thumbs up. It really, really helps me out. And yep, that's gonna be it. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye.